A 10 kiloton nuclear detonation is our number one national threat and we, we have to be ready for it. And uh, that's the purpose of this whole venue here, that and, and what we call radiological dispersal devices. general public all together there's you know that when they see radiation they, they get scared you know that you know if they had more educate if they was educated about it a little more maybe they wouldn't be as scared of it uh, the CTOS team was extremely knowledgeable about all the uh, all the topics we talked about in class um, and they were extremely helpful once we got out to the site and uh, and showing us how they're teaching a lot of first responders to do this kind of a survey so we uh, we do surveys a little differently, but it's good to see where the first responders are coming from too. As an instructor for hazmat technicians the last 10 years, I thought I was pretty good versed, but coming out here, I've gone from what is pretty basic knowledge to I feel pretty comfortable to be able to identify and realize the scale we need to scale an incident like this up quickly were it to happen. Uh, this is actually my first course past CSSC, which is the entry level for the CST. So um, it definitely got me more excited for other courses I'm going to be taking with the civil support team, but um, I was definitely impressed with the training I got here as well. Um, coming from like a 74 background already with Seaburn, I kind of just got more in depth with it and it was good training. I don't know what you guys do for the team, but don't put both survey guys on the same entry. Right, so one survey guy, I want you to have one survey guy. All right, so let's get a, one survey guy over here. Who's the other? Whoa, 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 whoa. Here we have higher backgrounds and we also have artificial sources, man-made sources that we put into play so they can really learn how to use their instruments and how their instruments interact with radiation in general. So you just can't really get that anywhere else and uh, this is going to help them operate safer and, and help protect the public down the road. Having actual sources and uh, predetermined scenarios where those sources would shine through in a certain way directionally or or anything like that. It was it was really good uh, in that aspect. We was out yesterday at the T1 site where they actually did a blast there and uh, we was actually picking up uh, the radiation there at the site instead of them using real sources. The scintillator is extremely sensitive to small changes in radiological uh, readings so there's no need to hover. When you think radiation you're like I can't be around that, I can't be they're too long and then they definitely break it down and give you examples and give you scenario base where you're actually working around it and you check your dose and you can see like you know it's not as dangerous as it can be perceived as. As long as you keep you know time distance shielding you keep those, those principles in play you know you can uh, you can get out get in there and work and get out of there without being all exposed to as much radiation. You'll see a lot of this stuff. People this serving. Part, yeah. I see people teach this. It's, it's absurd. It really is. Um, move till you get a reading. Now, once my readings start ramping up, now I slow down. Mm -hmm. But there's right. no point in slowing down if you're not getting anything. Being True. always back True. Now, now, I'm not saying run. Huh? Um, I think, personally, it's very helpful just because like I said, um, usually with radiation, I mean, there's only so many things you can do. There's only so many techniques you can use. Um, and, you know, based off your knowledge, whether you've worked with radiation a lot or if it's very minimal, um, anything helps. And so I definitely learned a lot of tips and practices from this training that I think I'll be able to take forward. 
Well, the importance of it is that they get to really use the instruments and really see how instruments interact with radiation. And that's just something that we can't really teach in regular hazmat classes. We can teach them how to turn on meters and how they theoretically work, but out here they can use their scintillators and their pancake probes and, and really understand. Our piece in national security terms is we're mostly a, a follow-on unit unless we're doing a, a joint hazard assessment team mission um, where we are paired with local first responders, normally the Joint Terrorism Task Force, the FBI, um, and other counterterrorism units and, and stuff like that. So our team really works with those, those individuals and on that mission all the time. So we love getting out and meeting new agencies and building relationships with those agencies and NNSS is is very good um, for an area and a a common operating picture to grow. We received 125 uh, micro rim on the approach to the door. At the threshold it exceeded 500 micro rim. Uh, I'm going to attempt to go through this field so I can find the other side of it. Roger. actually being able to understand how long areas would be contaminated and the, uh, the half-lives of, of some of the radiological energy was, was very good. This is one that's open on that door. Yeah. Not too there. So that's where our dot is within one of them. I think maybe. Moving down to 112. All right, and that's that other side. Let's get off this crate. That other side is where that uh, that other hit was in that other room. Yeah, sure. so, we got a 500 cone in there. I'm gonna move forward from that a little bit, but if I get over 750, I'm gonna turn and come back. All right. With today's threats, knowing terrorists are trying to get a hold of radiation, that um, they're gonna either want to do a exposure device or a dispersion device. Uh, first responders need to be able to isolate it to be able to uh, prevent further contamination and uh, and help anybody that's already been exposed. Two one two five. We're making entry into room one zero two now. Over. Roger, you got. Um, for first responders, I definitely think one hundred percent. Like, it would be great training because they, you know, they break it down. They give you from beginner, and then they even go even a little bit further. So, it would for the short amount of time you get a lot of knowledge for their mission and things that they would need to know going down range. For us, uh, either we're always going to be augmenting those first responders, so falling in on their equipment or on their training to make sure that we understand why they're doing what they're doing is one of the bigger aspects of why this was a, a pretty good course. Uh, we're wrapping up uh, room 101 now. The instructors were super knowledgeable, very professional, and they would explain anything to as far depth as, they, as you want them to. Um, and then the sites, there's, there's just so many props and so many things you can do with scenarios, so that was, that was great. One thirty-four. So what's the actual process? I think it's definitely a good training opportunity and I think that the team should return here. Out here at the uh, Nevada National Security Site, we're teaching responders to be ready for that number one national threat.